One thing that can make an old vehicle feel really worn out, even when the vehicle itself still has life in it, are consumable parts such as door seals. A bad door seal can start to let in wind noise or even moisture. And in fact, if we've got stuff going on like this up here where it's actually cracked and tearing, that's going to be a problem over time. We have some general cracking in here, which indicates that this no longer has its original springiness, so it's not sealing as tight as it should. Now you can go to a dealer for door seals, and in some cars you might have to, or for some parts of some cars. For example, we have a strip right here which is starting to give out. It looks like it might be custom. There's also a deflector piece along here. Same thing again. However, the main door seal around here happens to be one continuous piece of rubber with a split right here. And that means we can actually replace this with aftermarket. They weren't too pricey at all, about $40 a piece. So for each door, yes, that's $160. But compared to having a vehicle that lets in excess wind noise and tires you while you drive, or when you get something like this, begins letting moisture in, which can actually ruin your vehicle, this is a very cheap fix for a very common problem on old vehicles. But what we're interested in most is the side profile here. Notice that we have this ridge, which clamps down over the uh, door trim rail. And then we have this springy part coming out. And our new one, same exact thing. And this one even comes preloaded with a kind of a weather sealing goop up here, which will hold the uh, seal on. And you can see the remnants of the old one along here. The main thing that might slow you down from doing this is it's gonna look like a very quick job when we do it today, but that's because the plastic interior is already out of this vehicle. And a number of the trim pieces around the door do in fact overlap this seal. And as a result, if you had to pull those out and then do the door seal, it would be a much more involved job. Okay, let's just take a quick look at what you're up against here for trim panel removal. This particular vehicle has trim panels all the way around. Well, the first one that has to come out is this one here. This has multiple screws. It's also clamped around both sides of the seatbelt area here, front door seal and rear door seal back there. This one here needs to come out at the same time as the seatbelt. It's clamped around, again, also the front and the rear door seals. Let's look at this one here. That's uh, covering the fuse panel. There's a bolt that has to be removed back there and then it pops out. Same thing over on the driver's side, except that now it's involved with the hood release. And then coming up here is another piece all the way across the top. That also has to come out all the way back to here, along with this handle, which is remove these two plastic pieces and there's a couple screws back there. Coming in on the rear side now. You've already removed these two pieces when you got into the front, including that screw there. And then this panel has to be popped out. And coming inside, there's another one here that grips around the rear window and around the seal on this side. And then one more cross piece up here, along with another handle. It's, it's entirely doable, but it's a lot of screws. And also on this front piece over here, there are a couple retainer clips. And if you're not very careful to work those out gently, you'll actually just snap that old plastic in half. So. Be mindful of that. Same thing on the rear here. <clears throat> this piece comes out with screws. This top piece comes out with screws and a couple uh, metal clips that are inside here. And then these pieces also have to be loosened here and here. And then once those are out, then you can get to all of the seal. But right now it's pinched by some of these. And you don't necessarily have to pull every panel either, but all the way out, you may just have to loosen them, but you do have to loosen them for sure because all of them bite down into the track between this outer seal lip and the inner one. But that also depends on the vehicle. This here happens to be a 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ, but the procedure we're going to show you applies to many vehicles. And just like that, there's the old one. It appears that the uh, factory, when they put it in, they originally had a little piece of additional trim here, and I don't know if I can pull it out without destroying it. Yeah, I can. And what they've done with that is they parked it in both ends here just to try and seal it up. Now, if this one here didn't come with that preloaded goop, you might need something like this and apply it along here in order to get that proper bonding down of the little tooth piece right there. This, however, is pretty messy, so thankfully this one is preloaded with a sealing agent. We don't have to do that today. First thing, since this is not pre-molded for the door frame and we can't just hold it up, let's double check the length against the original one and make sure that they came out the same. Looks good. In fact, it might be just a hair too long, so we'll probably be getting out a knife and cutting that down just slightly when we're done. Here's the original factory sealing agent, and this stuff is actually still kind of goopy here in the warm weather, 
That's a good sign. It means I don't have to completely clean this out to get a good bond. If it was just cracking and falling off, that would be something different. I'm going to start applying this just the way the original one was, starting from roughly right about here. If you look close, you'll notice I'm getting a nice good bite right there against the uh, trim rail. So that's a good sign. It means it's fitting exactly like the original one did. I'm going around corners. Make sure you're actually getting all the way into the edge and that you're not leaving a loose piece there. It'll pull out later. Notice how in order to get around the top part here, I'm actually folding it back, which kind of pushes the channel open as I slide it on and helps me get a good, nice, tight fit the first time. Also works really well with split-room tubing. One potentially tricky spot right here is a really tight arc, but this is here is flexible enough that I think I can push that in without too much issue. Yeah. another slightly awkward spot right here because I kind of go in and down but once again just work slowly push it into the trim lip and it should be fine okay in spite of what I was initially worried about it looks like this pre-cut piece is exactly the right length so what I will do just to help out along here is I'll go ahead and put that uh, factory piece back in there just like it was how much it's actually going to do for us down here, but whatever. Okay, so there it is. This piece was purchased as an exact fit for this vehicle, so it looks like they actually got the trim pretty nice. Overall, that should provide a nice, fresh, weather-tight seal and less wind noise. So I've got three more doors to do, but as you can see, as long as you've already got the trim pieces out that might be in the way, the actual seal itself is a very quick process. On this particular vehicle, the rear door seals are identical to the fronts with the exception of being shorter. So I was able to order the exact same kit install it the exact same way, and then just trim off the extra at the bottom. Next, let's take a look at the lift gate. It also has tears starting at the base, and it doesn't compress very tightly. Like everything else on this vehicle we haven't already replaced, it's probably 20 years old. It installs on a pinch weld lip just like the door seals, but the spring clip has a different orientation. Just like the doors, this new seal came from eBay. Unlike the doors, it came with that tube joiner already installed. This one also requires removing several pieces of interior trim, but after that, it's a quick study. Also unlike the doors, be mindful that the area of the lift gate can trap a surprising amount of dirt, especially around the hinges. It doesn't help that a previous owner of this vehicle also did a fair bit of mudding. Even now, more than eight months and several washes later, I'm still chipping clay souvenirs out of unexpected places. Once the seal was ready to install, we noticed that it didn't have a nice preload of adhesive as the door seals and decided to use the 3M product shown earlier. Handy note, when doing this yourself, 
If the seal comes with the joiner insert pre-installed, start laying the seal from that end forward, in case you have to trim excess from the other side. After installing a replacement weather seal, note that the door, hatch, or trunk lid may be difficult to close and will remain that way until the seal beds into its final fitment. For what it's worth, I don't recommend using a heat gun to try and accelerate the bed-in process as some of these seals are not just rubber, they may contain foam cell structures that can be permanently damaged by high heat. Also, you might accidentally damage nearby trim pieces or upholstery. When practical, you can accelerate the bedding in process by just parking the vehicle in the sun for a week or two. Otherwise, wait a month or two and they'll get there. However, if you find that a door will not close and latch properly, you may need to adjust a latch assembly to compensate. The latch can be adjusted again at a later time if the seal settles farther than expected. Finally, what to do with a box of old door seals? The answer, of course, is... Thanks for joining us once again on Workshop Quick Takes. As you can see, there's a lot you can do to your vehicle that doesn't require specialized tools or materials. Simply order the correct parts and take a little time to do it right, and you can refresh a worn out piece of your old vehicle. It makes it feel a lot closer to a new one again. Has anyone seen my phone?